I think that 100 years of continuity of growers uh, looking after themselves is really important and it's a, it's a real milestone to reflect on the fact that we've got that longevity uh, and there's still that belief that growers are best place to uh, serve their own needs, look after themselves in this area. We think about what the trustees would think today when they formed the organisation, the Wheat Pool of Western Australia in 1922. Could they really imagine that 100 years later, that organisation that they started is now Australia's largest grain exporter? I'm extremely proud to be leading the marketing and trading division during its 100th year, uh, something that is quite an amazing event and an historic one. And when I look back at so many people who have worked here at this organisation and have led this organisation over my 24 years here, you know, I, I'm very, very proud. I think being the centenary of the grain pool is, is a, a, a real milestone and um, a salute to the people who actually started it all those years ago in that they set it up in such a way that it would continue on um, as, a, as a grower cooperative, now part of CBH, a totally grower-owned cooperative. And I think that's, that's rather unique, and I, I believe it's one of the biggest cooperatives uh, of its type in the world. When I joined, there were only about 20 staff, and we handled about, about a million tonnes of grain in 1988-89. And over time, that just kept growing and growing and growing with the development of new markets, particularly in uh, China and in Europe, Japan, um, Korea, uh, all over the place. We were selling oats into, into Germany. Uh, and so the volume of grain kept on rising. And with that, the need to, to employ more people. Well, it was a very exciting, exciting job. I mean, uh, we were taking product from Australia and Western Australia to the world, dealing with people of all different nationalities all over the world, travelling a lot, and, uh, and, and it was very enjoyable in that we did a lot of market development. We, uh, you know, we took the canola industry from nothing up to a million tonnes. In the case of barley, barley, when I joined, we were only getting a few thousand tonnes, and in fact, we were receiving some some barley in bags. That shows you, that dates me a bit. But uh, we ended up developing the barley market again to, to reach a million tonnes production. So what I enjoyed about it was it was so exciting and so challenging. At the time I joined the board, uh, there was two new crops coming into existence. One was lupins and one was canola. Uh, so there was a fair bit of excitement about developing new markets for new crops and uh, seeing what we could do. So, so that was the change in the system and uh, it just continued to evolve. Of course, uh, production increased too. So instead of just handling a few small shiploads of grain, we, we now had sort of millions of tonnes to think about. So that created a whole lot of new opportunities. It was phenomenal and uh, we had a great board. Uh, everybody was on the same wavelength. Uh, we had opportunities everywhere. Um, to, um, to create markets and to cultivate those markets so that the customers wanted to come back to us year after year. And uh, so it was a very, very exciting time. What it was, it was all about relationships. So, um, and and that, those relationships started right at the top of the board, from the chairman of the board, all the directors, all the marketing staff, everybody. So. Um, it was never uncommon, like at home, for example, when, when Dad was uh, on the board, there, there, would, there would be quite often a delegation of Japanese or someone would come and, and come for dinner and stay the night. And then they'd go out onto the farm and, and look at the barley as it was growing or the canola or whatever it was growing. Um, and the same, I know the same was with all the directors and Rob Sewell particularly would spend, take these guys everywhere, he'd fly them around in his plane and and then, uh, and Kevin Swan would always be, and, and the marketing team, they'd always be having barbecues at their house and, you know, and it was something that was particularly important, particularly to the Japanese, that they, they really loved feeling as though they're part of the family, if you want. In Spain, we were, we were out there with some of the, the leading bull owners for the, uh, 
for the bullfights and, uh, you know, and out there and they were entertaining us and we actually got some lupins in there to feed the bulls. Um, the most interesting one would have been into Finland when I went with one of the marketing people and we were trying to promote lupins as a, as a base feed for making dog biscuits because these people in Finland were, were farming foxes. So, uh, you know, you create markets like that. I used to say to people who uh, worked with the grain pool, particularly that uh, it would do uh, no harm to your CV to have that on uh, your list of people who you work for, uh, because we were respected in many areas. CBH uh, and the grain pool had the benefit of uh, retaining knowledge, uh, and that was an important uh, aspect, certainly in the marketing uh, when uh, that personal in interaction with buyers uh, was um, very, very important. I think that our growers have been uniquely blessed and uh, I think incredibly wise in not letting go of their marketing and trading and their storage and handling businesses. They have been lost to them in the other states. Um, whereas in Western Australia, our growers have cuddled them very tightly. And I think for excellent reason. I was always exceptionally clear about that when I was at CBH, that it was in their interest that they own their supply chain to the port, but they also own their marketer. Um, they get wonderful transparency of why the price is the way it is. They get to see the margins that are made. They get to see and understand the markets. They get direct intelligence about what to grow. And I believe since the merger, the grain pool or marketing and trading has helped CBH as well ensure that its storage and handling system is grower focused when it comes to the segregation of grains and the keeping of certain qualities special to be able to get those premiums. I think we're pretty lucky. Uh, when I look at over east and you know I did a lot of travel over east and I was involved as chairman of a number of the boards, the, the barley boards uh, uh, along those lines in the East Coast as well, um, they've all disappeared. So uh, I'd like to think that our new merger with CBH puts us probably at the top of uh, a lot of those companies almost around the world. No, I mean, I think the grain pool's just a, it's an iconic West Australian business. CBH is Australia's largest co-op. Uh, Marketing Trading is uh, Australia's largest exporter of grain. And I think they're uh, phenomenal things that West Australian growers have been able to achieve through their co-op and through CBH m &T. The name has changed a lot. It's gone from Grain Pool of Western Australia to Grain Pool Proprietary Limited to CBH Marketing and Trading. But I don't think it's changed. It is still a people business. The, be it the trading or the marketing needs good quality people to do a really sound job in both those disciplines. And uh, the culture, I feel, is the same. It is customer focused, it's diligent around the trading, and growers still, even today, trust it. When the price is the same on the day from five different buyers, they'll trust to sell their grain to marketing and trading because they know it's their own business. So I think the vision of WA growers throughout that time and the leadership from some fantastic boards have seen this company last for more than 100 years. Not only because of its length of time that it has been here servicing Western Australian growers, but its absolute commitment to WA growers, but also to customers throughout the world, has made it one of the most respected organisations in Australia, and I suggest in the world.